Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I'm gonna be showing you the new way to play Sniper, which involves Dragon Lance, Mage Slayer, and then eventually Disperser, a very cool item build using some of the new meta items. Obviously, Mage Slayer, one of the most popular items in Dota right now, because it does quite a bit of damage, gives you incredible stats, really good attack speed, and makes you stupid tanky all at the same time. In a game like this against Puck, Mars, or Spirit and Lion, even Morphling to some extent, it makes a ton of sense why you would want a Mage Slayer. And then Disperser, what's really cool about Disperser on Sniper is that when you click take aim, the ability slows you. If you disperse yourself, you can have guaranteed headshot without getting slowed. Oh, and a bonus 200 attack range. It's really cool. Also at the same time today, uh, I've decided to wear no pants for this video. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. No pants speed, not that you would ever know because the webcam does not show below the table that I'm currently sitting at, but you can trust me, I have no pants on. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the GameLink website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. So for the laning stage, he has a good matchup here. I would say the best match was to pick Sniper into, if you have the choice, are OD, Quap, Puck, these heroes that tend to dominate the lane or don't like pressure. The reason why Puck's bad against Sniper, terrible armor, hates getting clicked by Sniper in general. OD has a range problem and a gap close problem, also hates long range heroes. And then Quap also doesn't like physical damage until she eventually gets Shivas, which nowadays they don't even all buy. Now in the laning stage, the main goal is to use take aim as much as humanly possible. The bonus 200 attack range makes it basically free harass, and so you'll see in this clip here, he's gonna go on the puck, clicks him once, twice, looks for the third one, gets it, and then it's gonna back off and eat a tango. Make sure when you're laning this hero, you're buying ample regen so you can get aggressive. A lot of people will make the mistake of buying one set of tangos and saying, oh, that's all I need. I need to buy my next Wraith Band. And then the next Wraith Band's useless because you're 100 health. But yeah, he ends up finding a kill on the puck here, somewhat in coordination with his level three timing as he uses the take aim again, right? Just take aim, take aim, take aim. And eventually once he's chipped down the puck enough, eating another tango, he's able to actually walk the guy down. Puck makes the mistake of committing the orb forward and he literally just shoots him to death. From there, the lane kind of just progressed on. He continued to harass the puck off cooldown with E and CS as many creeps as possible. He went two Wraith Bands in the treads with a stick and ample regen whenever he needed. I will say I don't like the second Wraith Band. Reason being is with one Wraith Band, you have plenty of armor. The second Wraith Band, right, the armor you get from it, in my opinion, is somewhat underwhelming. I can understand it because stats are good, but two strength, right, which I would argue HP is the main value you're getting out of the second Wraith Band, is just not that good. I'm not saying I think you should buy Bracer, but personally, something like Raindrops into just Treads is a little bit better in my eyes. However, I can see the line. But yeah, with this build, when you max W and E against the heroes that get pressured by you in lane, there is one very simple goal. Take mid tower. You also have the option, if you feel threatened by a rotation, just to deny creeps. For instance, here he decides to push in the wave and then look to take the tower, but he had the option just to continue to deny the wave as much as possible. It's not like Puck jungles efficiently, and so if he was to keep the lane back permanently and deny creeps until minute 10, it would honestly be pretty efficient for the outcome of the game due to the fact that Puck would be poor. Also, one thing to note is I wish he bought the Belt of Strength as fast as possible. I personally think when you do this much damage with max headshot, you just want to stay alive. Yeah, Blade of Lacrity makes sense. It's agility, it's damage, it's attack speed, right? In a clip like this, he's going to hit really hard. He's going to be able to take the tower, but you're not that tanky. You could die to a rotation. I think something along the lines of Belt of Strength Range drops will allow you to maximize the potential of a build that kind of is all in, right? You don't have Disperser yet. If you click take aim, you can't move. Like for instance here, I think if he's on strength treads and this fairy fire is built to strength and this blade of alacrity is rain drops, he has a much higher chance of actually surviving this gank. He's on strength treads as is, which is good. All uh, right, all fine and dandy, but as I said, right, the rain drops and belt of strength would give him, it would probably give him a, an effective 300 HP and perhaps he would live, it would at least give his team time to respond, which is a big deal. Time to respond is what gets your team return kills, guy, and that's why HP is very important in the early game. After that, he's basically playing like discount Dragonite. <laughs> yeah, like literally, uh, buys the belt of strength here and TV's bottom after his mid death looks to take a fight. Always try to shoot the guys that are easy to kill. For instance, he has the option between three heroes here. Hitting Morphling is stupid. His armor's too high. Uh, hitting Puck would be okay. That would honestly be fine. But I think he just wants to try to kill off the line. Ends up being the right choice. They do kill off the lines, so good decision making there. Things look pretty bad here. Looks like he's gonna get run down. Decides to attack move on the Morphling. Gets him down to half health. 
right? Uh, if you get a headshot proc, it makes right click heroes very bad at killing you. So I think that's what he was aiming for. And yeah, ends up setting for a huge chrono in the buyback on the lion. Oh no. No, that's a deserving tip from the veg. Oh gosh. So great bait. I love how he kited out. Once again, buying time for his team. Don't stand your ground to sniper. Use take aim to push people away. When it's on cooldown, try to buy time for your team to come in, save you, set up, and then re-engage. Next up, he decided to slow down the pace of the game, which I think makes sense, right? Once you've taken the mid tower and the safe lane tower, it's a little bit unclear on what to do. The map kind of gets a bit weird. Uh, and I think it's okay to slow down the pace of the game, play for that mage slayer timing. He also makes a good decision to kind of shift over and help with assassinate. That's why I like that he skills assassinate. Some people will skip it, which makes sense. Shrapnel scales incredibly well. So sometimes it makes sense to max shrapnel over taking assassinate or your 10 talents, which are also very good. But yeah, I like the point in assassinate. It allows you to contribute after you've taken the mid towers without committing your hero, which is important. Like here, this plays okay because Lion's dead, Puck is showing, Mars is showing, Morphling showing. So he feels confident walking in the jungle or spirits just being a psycho but it can be very risky. Once again, helps out with another kill into the Morphling with the Assassinate, and now he can continue to farm, picking up his Mage Slayer at minute 14, which is an incredible time. Now, the big issue with this hero is sustainability, and I will say I actually think it's the best idea to take one of the HP neutral items. That might be hard to believe because of the fact that, well, you want damage, but having health with this Mage Slayer is too good. It's why the Dragonlance is necessary. If you rush Mage Slayer, it's a good item rush, and it's an option. He honestly maybe could have done that, but you want HP to go with the magic resist and the spell damage reduction. So yeah, something like Seeds of Serenity, Royal Jelly, and Safety Bubble are probably my top three choices, which might seem insane, but you want to make sure you're full HP when a fight breaks out and you have all of this effective health with the Mage Slayer. And talking about effective health with the Mage Slayer, you're going to instantly see it pay off here. He is going to go down in this clip, but it's okay. It's the amount of time you can buy. The, the reason why this build is so good is it's deceptive. You'll notice the Mars Starts off, gets some good damage on Mars, whatever, he's bulwarked, you're not going to kill him right away. Okay, looks for an assassinate on Earth Spirit. Doesn't kill him, continues to poke. Heads back into the jungle, and he actually ends up getting smoked on. They had a ward, they saw the sniper was going back in the jungle. And typically, this is insta-death. Imagine he has a Mask of Madness with Dragonlance here. He is dead. But this sniper is deceptive. He gets gone on, but with Magic Resistant Mage Slayer, this Mars' damage is way worse than he usually would be. Same thing for the Earth Spirit. So he kills off the Earth Spirit, reapplies Mage Slayer to both enemy heroes before dying, which is really good value damage, and by so much time, as I was talking about earlier, by so much time that his team is able to get in, close the gap, the Mars dies as a result, Morphling gets doomed as a result, and they get a triple kill. And you might be like, oh, you're nitpicking speed. This is just the perfect sniper. How is this the perfect sniper game? They have so much gap close. This build is fantastic for this game. It's absolutely fantastic. And he goes for a sniper that would typically just feed in a match like this against Mars, Earth Spear, Puck, Somewhat Lion, even Morphling to some extent. To a, to a sniper that sets up kill after kill after kill for his team. He's done it multiple times now. That was the best example though. After that, the game slows down a bit. After that, the game slowed down a bit. The enemy team kind of gave up on fighting. The, so they sort of just pulled ahead, got some pickoffs. He picks up Dragonlance, which is one of the best items you can get. The other item that I love is Specialist Array. It gives you a lot of damage in that HP, which once again, we want that HP with Mage Slayer. It's too damn good. But yeah, you go to Fusel next. I think that this build can be modified in a lot of ways. Like, I still think you can just go Mjolnir. I think Silver Edge is fine. Uh, there's a meme build, which is like Conda and a Daedalus, but I think that build's terrible unless it's like minute 40 or 50 and you can't show at all. So I would not suggest going Conda Sniper. I think it's generally terrible. Sorry, all of you meme lovers. I understand that makes you feel bad, but okay. At this point, basically, once you have Disperser, if you want to use Take Aim, you can use Take Aim and Disperser at the same time to chase. However, save the Disperser. Don't just use it every time you use Take Aim. Like in this team fight here, his first Take Aim was not needed with Disperser. He's just clicking the first person he sees. That's how you execute Sniper at this point of the game, and they win the fight. However, if someone is in front of you and you want to click Take Aim, for instance, at the end of this fight, that is what he did, right? As the fight progressed, you'll notice when he clicks take aim in two seconds from now, he's gonna click it now. After this assassinate, take aim, disperser at the same time. Now, if you watch him, which I'll play in free camera, he's zooming in between hits. He's still moving at max attack speed. So it allows you to attack move while using take aim. It's really nice and it's good damage. It's just an effective item. But all right, that's gonna be about all for today's video. I know a bit on the shorter side, but I just wanna keep it short, sweet, and give you guys a new little build to try. That's gonna be about all for today from your boy, Pantless Speed, not that you would know, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.
And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.